Hey guys, this is Kaijin Hunter. It's been about half a day since the announcement of Monster Hunter Rise and I've had the opportunity to both sleep a little bit and take in a lot of the info which is out there. In this video, I want to give you a complete product overview as well as my in-depth analysis of the trailer and gameplay footage. Monster Hunter Rise is being developed by the Monster Hunter Portable team. It's pretty much Monster Hunter Portable 5th in all but name. If you're not familiar with this team, the director is Yasunori Ichinose, and they're known for making the PlayStation Portable series games, which include Monster Hunter Portable, Portable 2nd, Portable 2nd G, which you may know as Monster Hunter Freedom Unite in the West, Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, and because the main series also went to a portable device in the 4th generation, they dropped the whole Monster Hunter Portable name tag and called their next game Monster Hunter Generations and Generations Ultimate. So you may be wondering what's the difference between a main series game and a portable series game, and there's really not a huge amount of difference, but the portable series typically are more colorful and vibrant than the main series, there's a bigger spotlight on the felines and sort of the goofier aspects of the game, a little bit more experimental in the action, and they introduced many key staple features in the series, such as the feline kitchen, guild cards, palicos, armor spheres, and many moves for each weapon, which have been included in every game since. So yeah, there's a lot of reason to be excited that this is the portable team making the next game. Monster Hunter Rise is going to be a brand new Monster Hunter for the Nintendo Switch, built using the RE engine. Like the games of the past, we can expect it to utilize many of the quality of life and system mechanics of Monster Hunter World and Iceborne, but to add a new twist to help propel the series forward even more. It releases worldwide on March 26, 2021, and the game is expected to come in at about 8.7 gigabytes. The main concept of the game is a Monster Hunter game that you can easily pick up and play anytime, anywhere, and with anyone. The gameplay hook is free movement, both with running up and across the environment like a ninja, but also using the wire bug to zip up, down, left, and right and do all sorts of new actions. The artistic design is unapologetically Japanese in theme, and the game introduces a new hunting canine companion called the Palamute. The reason why it's called Monster Hunter Rise is for a few reasons, one of them being obviously because of the massive amount of traversal that you can do in this game with running and jumping around using that wire bug, you can rise to new heights, and also Rise just being sort of like, you know, the energy and enthusiasm of being able to go online with a lot of players and new companions and just have a ball. The Wire Bug where Monster Hunter Tri had underwater combat and Iceborne had the Clutch Claw, the special defining mechanic of this game is the Wire Bug. It's used not only to traverse the new free roam maps, but to also pull off some really cool new actions similar to what we saw with the hunting styles and arts in the previous portable game. The maps are all new and feature the same no-loading seamless experience as Monster Hunter World, and have new structures for you to roam around and jump off using the Wire Bugs. The Palamute Monster Hunter Rise introduces a new canine companion called the Palamute. They will hunt and run alongside you. For no stamina, you can ride them around the map, even up walls, and they're aggressive and will attack monsters. You can even use some items while you're riding them as well. Where the Palamutes are the sort of attack support, the Palicos in this game appear to be the support type. You could take two support companions with you on a hunt. You could do one cat, one dog, two dogs, two cats, whatever you like. And while in past games, if you played online, you couldn't take a companion with you, in Rise, each player can take one of their companions with them. And this party-like atmosphere, combined with that ability to run up the walls and cliffs, again, is why they call the game Monster Hunter Rise. New Monsters Of course, one of the most exciting things about a new Monster Hunter game are the new monsters that it introduces. Monster Hunter Rise is very much inspired by Japanese demons, called Oni. This is going to be the second time ever in Monster Hunter that we have a flagship monster that's a fanged wyvern, the first one being Zenogar, and now we have Magnamalo. Obviously this monster is going to be really tied into the story, which we'll have to wait and see how that works. It's got this weird, crazy, like purple mist Oni thing going on, like special energy, so I expect it to be like every other game, which is it's causing some problems with the other monsters, and it's going to be really exciting to see. It is worth noting that in Japanese they do apply sort of nicknames to the species types, and for this one, they call it the Malice Tiger Wyvern. The design here obviously has tons of motifs of like Shogun, Samurai, and stuff like that. And I think it looks really cool. The next one is the Crazy Bird Aknosome, which is nicknamed in Japanese as the Umbrella Bird. This bird wyvern creature stands on one leg and has a headpiece that can open up like an umbrella. And it uses it for all sorts of different attacks. This is very similar to the Japanese Oni called Kasa Obake. Next is the Great Izuchi. The monster has a tail that has a scythe-like end to it, which is why it's called the Kamaitachi Wyvern. Kamaitachi in English means weasel cut. It's sort of like when something goes, goes 
right past you really fast, you only feel the wind, then when you look down, you're actually cut across your skin in sort of an arced shape because of a scythe-like blade. There is a Japanese oni called the Kamae Tachi, which I'm sure this is what the inspiration was behind this monster. The bird wyvern usually is paired up with two smaller izuchi and they'll attack in sort of a formation, so you'll need to pay attention to the smaller ones while hunting the leader of the pack. And then we have the new amphibian monster, Tetranodon. This monster has a huge belly and will move fast and aggressive, and once it swallows stuff up, its stomach will expand and it will be slower but more powerful. Think of this as almost like a platypus version of Zamtrios. Its nickname in Japanese is called the Kappa Frog, so I think it's pretty obvious that this scene is inspired by the water imps called Kappa. And finally, the main village for this game is called Kamuda. We don't know a lot about the story, but we do know that 50 years ago the village was ravaged by a calamity called a rampage, and that the villagers are sort of all teaming up to make sure that they can overcome it when it happens again. In English, they just call this the rampage, but in Japanese, it's called Hyakuryu Yako which literally means the Night Parade of 100 Wyverns, and this is a very distinct wordplay on Hyakinyako, which means a Night Parade of 100 Demons. This is a very well-known concept in Japanese culture, in which a horde of uncontrolled demons is unleashed, sometimes depicted in an orderly procession. This tells me that this is something that occurs often, it's not just once, and it also tells me that it's going to be something to do with multiple monsters in succession. Whether this is a new type of like gameplay mode or what, we're not sure, they said that it's going to be a unique experience, and they'll share details later. As far as products concerned, they do have a bunch of different special and limited editions available depending on your region. I don't want to cover all of them because they're not all available in every region. For example, in Japan, we got really lucky and they're selling a special collector's edition for like $150, uh, which has this like massive 55 centimeters long Palamute plush, which you can prop on your lap to play on. That's crazy, and yeah, I bought two of them, one for Yuna and one for me. The game will be shown at Tokyo Game Show next week, and I look forward to sharing any more details that we have from there as well. So that is sort of covering all the official information we have, so now I want to go into my observations from the footage that we've seen, starting with a run-through of the trailer itself. I really love this intro, they really nailed it. Uh, quick note, we see our first sign of endemic life, which was one of my favorite features from World and Iceborne, so I'm very happy we're going to see a few different other examples in these gameplay clips but these sort of like Tanuki-like creatures, which hopefully we can collect and we can decorate in our room. Okay, I will stop this really quick. Uh, for those of you who are curious, obviously that's a Japanese shrine gate because this is an old shrine map. Uh, but if you're curious, this is from Shinto, uh, not Buddhist. So running up, we got the bamboo, we got the Izuchi here on the ground, which is nice. Uh, a lot of these paths that lead up to a temple, you'll see a lot of similar stuff here in Japan. Okay, pausing here, there's a few things of note. One, we've got another example of endemic life, which is this colorful red-orange bird, which we'll see later in the trailer up close. We also have these two statues of what look like dogs, and this looks incredibly similar to the statue of Hachiko, which if you've been to Tokyo in Shibuya, is a very well-known statue of a dog. Uh, normally, something that would be here would be something like foxes, uh, like a Shinto shrine des devoted to Inari would have two foxes there. Uh, but we have two dogs, so I think this goes really well with the theme of having new canine companions introduced. Oh, that's my pup. I don't know if you just caught that, but the hunter spoke actual words. Normally the hunter in these games just says grunts, haya, uh, and stuff like that. But for to have them actually speaking, which we'll see several times in this trailer, is something that's really new, and it's going to be interesting if they actually manage to record all the different dialogue with all the different voice samples that you can choose from. That would be pretty neat. Um, and it is going to be kind of nice to have a hunter who's not just standing there in the middle of a cutscene completely mute. Um, so that will be interesting to see how that goes. I gotta stop here and just call out the amount of absolute artistic detail that we're seeing here. Look at the way that the outfits are stitched, how they're made, especially the one on the palico, because you can see it up close. We've got like little bells, we've got a shuriken on the outfit, we've got all these little patchworks, we've got the hand dye blue color, which I think is iconic. We got paw prints on the weapon. Like everything here is just shining just tons of love and attention that's been put into the game. Oh!
And, you know, we really got to thank Monster Hunter World and Iceborne for this one because they're streamlining what looks like the ideas from riding the wildlife, which is great because it allows you to really traverse fast. Perhaps it'll have some scouting features. I don't know, maybe fast collection. Uh, but you are able to control the scene freely, which they did note in a press release. So it's not like you just ride it and it just sort of like runs away. Uh, you are able to ride it around and explore, which is cool. I'm actually not sure what this gold sort of effect is. Uh, it looks like you're running and you're crossing some insects. Maybe this is replenishing your wire bugs. Like maybe it's charging them up. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to probably wait and see some more details on this one. So here we do get some confirmation that we can use several wire bugs in a row. Like the, you often see in the trailer, they'll do a wire bug and then a jump, and then they can chain together another wire bug. So uh, they did say that there's going to be some exploration in these areas. So there's probably some hidden stuff that you can find, which is great because collection has become kind of a thing in Monster Hunter that you just do it when you need to do it. And it's not really a fun activity anymore. Uh, if they can make collecting and finding materials a fun experience and just fun platforming, which I think they are here. That's awesome. I also love the idea that they have these really high elevation areas because even if you fall and you screw up, you can still just free run all the way up the cliff. So it's not like you're going to be like 30 seconds behind trying to catch up to your other teammates, even though it wouldn't be funny if you're the one guy who falls when everybody else jumped. Also, Easter egg, if you look at the size of that rock, that is a big doggo. Okay, doing a quick rewind here, it looks like we have a bird with a fat belly, probably because it sucked up some nectar or some certain type of essence. And these are things that it looks like the wire bugs will use to replenish their sort of stock. Interesting enough, though, the green one wasn't collected, but the orange one was, which makes me think that we might actually have different types of wire bugs. Like maybe ones recharge faster than others, and maybe one makes you travel farther than others. I don't know. It'd be interesting to find out. The new village of Kamuda is absolutely gorgeous. I love how the little dragons at the top that are spewing out the exhaust is the exact same heavy bow gun as the little girl later in the trailer has. I thought that was a really nice touch. I am wondering if the postal delivery feline is what we see here. If so, that would be pretty funny. We actually see in another footage that they shared that the hunter is able to send off the owl as well. So this tells me that rampages will probably is something that occurs after you collect like a certain amount of tracks or signs, sort of like how we had with like signs of a turf war or something in Iceborne. Or once you collect it, you send off a letter, he gets and he's like, okay, we've got monsters gathering, we've got a rampage coming up, whatever that means. An important letter. It looks like... We've got a rampage on our hands. Again, and I know this is early, but trailers are really hard because they're cutting up dialogue out of context. Uh, but the Japanese here gives us a little bit more of a hint of the nuance of what he's talking about, which is he says, "Ugh, it looks like we got a rampage about to start. Um, so this tells me that there it happens multiple times uh, and that it hasn't started. And what he means by on our hands means it's about to occur. So uh, it looks like an event driven thing. I do note like those lanterns in the back are something that you normally see on sort of establishments with food and drink. So maybe that's a gathering hall. Maybe that's just a canteen. I don't know. Uh, but I definitely like seeing those red lanterns. Yes. I don't know if you notice this, but it has sort of like an old school Japanese cinema sort of filter applied to this. I don't know if that's just for the trailer or they're going to have that for the in-game. Uh, but I thought that was a nice artistic touch. And now bring on the new monsters. I love the effect. The editing here is great. So, Acnosome. That was a really smooth evade to the right-hand side without even being in the middle of a combo. I did find that little yelp from the hunter being really funny. Uh, I, it is nice noting, though, because they're on a new engine. All these effects are brand new. Like, that fire looks fantastic. Honestly, I think this is going to be a fan favorite for a lot of people. It's cute. I just want to say I love the idea, the concept of this monster, that it hunts with another two. I imagine if you kill one, it probably restocks it and calls a new one. Uh, but I think that's a really clever idea that we haven't quite seen before. It's been 50 years since the last calamity. A few words of note here. He does say calamity, but in the Japanese, he's just saying it's been 50 years since that horrible tragedy when our village was attacked. 
Uh, so they're not necessarily using the same language as sort of like Amatsu or like Shagado Magara, which I know Calamity has been used in the past for. So I wouldn't read too deeply into that. I think just 50 years, something bad happened and they're afraid it's going to happen again. Of course, I also like the 50 years, the five being called out, because obviously this is what I think they would consider fifth generation. So it's kind of a nod to the number five there. A monster is Here we get a hint of two NIM PCs that we probably are involved with in the story of this game. So I'm very interested to find out what their names are and what they do. I love that that heavy bow gun is like half the size of that girl. <laughs> like, how does she carry it? No, no. Press F to pay respects for Toby, uh, unless this thing makes him really stronger. Maybe the tail of Magnum Allo makes monsters like super powerful. We'll have to find out. Magnum Allo. I, I love the amount of memes I'm already seeing with Pokemon Sword and Shield being combined into an actual monster like this. <laughs> So here we get a nice shot of four hunters running on their doggies. I'm kind of curious what happens if you're the one who chooses to go with a Palico. Are you just going to be that far behind these guys? <laughs> like, how do you how do you catch up? Uh, but I also like the different designs of the dogs. We can see different color schemes. Turf Wars! So there's a few things in here. Like, we know that he's doing an aerial attack probably from a wire bug, but we get to see a special aerial type of move. And if you notice, the hunter actually says, take this or something like that. So there's probably going to be some presets of voices that you can turn on or off if you want them, where your hunter will actually say something when it does a specific special move. So an aerial vault, obviously, in the game is considered to be special. So here we get some endemic life and we get a sort of close up of interacting with it, which I thought was really cool. If they're going through this much trouble to put animations, I'm sure there's going to be like a my house where you can capture and put these things in, or at least I hope so. We also get Rathalos armor, if you notice, so they didn't show Rathalos in the game, but come on, it's the flagship monster, so we know it's going to be in there. Now, if you notice, those bubble and the bubble effects, which I'll show you in a clip right after the trailer, is the same effect that we get from Mizutsune and its bubbles. So this tells me that Mizutsune is pretty much confirmed to be coming back and would make a lot of sense, being that it's very Asian and Fox designed. And finally, another spider. I know a lot of people are wondering, is this Nursilla? Is this Shrouded Nursilla? But if you look at the design and the silhouette, it's actually a little bit different. So this tells me it's going to be a new spider monster. It is nice to see that while the dogs are sort of called the attack type, they also have defensive stuff. So it also tells me that cats are not just for healing. They're probably for buffing your attack as well. And here's what I was mentioning earlier, which you can actually send off an owl. I don't know if this is going to be like sending it back, asking for some provision sort of items to be dropped in, or if this is going to be a thing where like you collect a certain amount of things and then you can do a rampage. I don't know. Considering they made the effort to make an owl, it would not be surprising if Malfestio or if a new type of owl comes in this game in the form of a monster. So I don't know if you caught that, but there's interactive environments. So if you go up on certain cliffs and you swing your sword at vegetation, this special sort of like nectar enhanced bird, which again, I covered before, I think it recharges your wire bugs, uh, suddenly is, is revealed. Uh, so this tells me that the, you know, exploring and understanding where hidden things are gonna be could be really advantageous. So here we get to see another example of those auto shout outs being actual spoken words, which is interesting. Also appears that after you do the wire bug to throw yourself into air, you can do an aerial vault forward. Then you can do an attack or you can chain it together with another wire bug. And this is the crazy one. Watch what happens here. He does the wire bug to jump forward. And then, as I said, you can do a forward vault, but you can also do a backwards evade in the air as well. So watch this. <laughs> that is amazing. This one is hard to catch, but he uses the wire bug to set sort of like a trip wire. And if the monster hits that trip wire, it acts as a counter. So he's using what looks like a gun lance and he's pulling off a counter move, which he'll run forward hit the monster and immediately turn back around facing towards it. That's a crazy awesome ability. It reminds me of like mixing adept and hunter arts all into one. Have a taste of this. <laughs> so he's doing a spinny whirly move. This again reminds me of Hunter Arts for something like the Sword and Shield that we had in Generations. This is for my fellow hunters. This logo is really cool. To me, it almost looks like we have two monsters because at first I thought it was the silhouette for Magnamalo, but if you look at the actual silhouette of the monster, the tail doesn't line up to anything that we're seeing in the logo. So I'm super excited to find out what the heck this uh, sort of design refers to. 
Shall we go? And come on, like this sells the game alone, right? I mean, guild sweethearts are obviously a big part of the game because we interact with these characters so much. Uh, we want them to have tons of personality. We want them to be interesting. And now it looks like we have two of them and it looks like they're twins. Uh, guessing by the, sort of like the decorations in their hair, I'm going to guess that the left side is the low rank uh, guild sweetheart and the right hand side is the high rank one because it's got two. But of course, look at those ears. They're not human. Uh, and one small little detail here is the corn on the right hand side. We see dry corn being hung out to dry like that. That's something that they'll do in some rural parts of Japan, sort of like early autumn. So it kind of makes me think that the overall theme seasonal wise is early autumn for this game with the orange colors. Um, I can't really explain the cherry blossoms other than that. There's some really rare like fall winter cherry blossoms that bloom in Japan, but they're like stupidly rare. Um, but yeah, I, I love the color palette and vibe of this game. It's just fantastic. In here, of course, we get confirmation that they're going to have layered armor, uh, which is something that they had obviously in Iceborne as well. So that's great to see. Amiibos look fantastic and those weird realistic skins. Uh, I'm not a fan. <laughs> Okay, almost done. This is sort of the extra footage they had from the diary. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Watch this. You can do an upward uh, spring forward using the wire bug. You can do a swingy thing. So you can go left and right and swing on it so you can aim. Or you can do a forward push uh, with the wire bug as well. This also tells us that we can have at least three wire bugs, at least with this type, uh, because this is the first time we saw the hunter using three in a row. Here we see some fun stuff, you know, like jumping off. We actually have a bullfango here in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's going to cause trauma for some of you guys. Love these small bugs around, and they allow you to climb to a variety of places that would normally be out of reach. This rare spot, which they were showing off that you can explore and find, tells me that there's probably going to be three types of wire bugs. We've got the sort of yellow on the left, the orange in the middle, and the green on the right. So simple concept, tons of ideas and things that you can do with this idea with the wire bug. New combo pass as well. The charge blade is using the forward swing from the wire bug to go straight into elemental attack number two. And that's from sword mode, mind you. Insect Glaive can do moves like we had in Iceborne, which is awesome. And yeah, as long as you have a wire bug, it's kind of like aerial attack on demand, which makes me think that they're going to nerf uh, mounting. I can't imagine they're going to be able to mount that easy in this game because of all this. But I love the variation. It means that everyone's going to find a unique way to play each weapon, which was the concept of Monster Hunter Generations. In the exploration, we actually get a sign of another endemic life, this nice little fluffy tail sort of creature. It was really nice to see Arzaros is returning. They were just demoing off how the, uh, the dog attacks monsters and how the Palico does support moves. Again, watch the bubbles here. It's the exact same effect as the heal bubbles from Mizutsune. So if you don't know Mizutsune, look it up. It's an amazing monster and my favorite of the Faded Four from Generations. I love that you can choose between uh, two dogs, two cats, or whatever. I love just showing off the different designs here and the different variations. In here, there's not a lot to comment about. I just want to show you in case you missed the developer's diary, but they showed a bunch of gameplay uh, clips from these new monsters, which I thought were really cool. So we got to see Agnosom sort of using its head to plow through at you. We see sort of the great Izuchi teaming up with the other Izuchis to try to throw you off balance, which is really nice. This, this does look like a really fun hunt, doesn't it? I do love how these maps are gorgeous, but they're not overly cluttered, which was my main complaint from World, but it was also the greatest strength of World. I think that was the concept. So uh, it's not to say that World was doing anything wrong. I think they did everything right. Uh, but I like the sort of intimacy that we get with these more open maps. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more focused, at least for me. Tetra is going to be a favorite for a lot of people, I think. It's just cute. It's like big, it's roly poly. Uh, it does belly flops against Arzuros. It tries to eat Arzuros here. Watch it. It like tries to <laughs> get in my belly, <laughs> like tries to eat him. And Arzuros is like, no, nah, man. Uh, but the turf wars look much more engaging and more dynamic. And just really building on that legacy that Iceborne did. Your base in this game is called Kamura Village. Okay, this rice making thing, I hope it's a mini game because it looks hilarious. I love the cats that are cheering it on. I'm hoping they're going to do an in-depth sort of tour of this thing during Tokyo Game Show. If they do, I'll be making sure to cover that. Uh, but yeah, it's super Japan. Like, I, I really like it. 
And one last little thing I wanted to mention is they said with the amiibos that you can do a lottery each day to get some useful items. In the Japanese trailer, they called it Fukubiki, which is like little thing like when you spin it round and round and you get a color ball that pops out. And if it's white, it's like normal. If it's colored, it's rare and you get a good prize. So I just love, again, them just leaning into the Japanese themes here. And I'm going to really look forward to sharing with you guys the background on each one of these elements once we know them, how they're done in the game. Anyways, honestly, I think I covered absolutely everything. I'm super hyped for this. I love the trailer and the reveal. I hope you guys are excited as I am. Thanks for sticking around with me if you've actually watched to the end of this video because I didn't realize it was going to go on for so long. Uh, but we'll be getting a news drop, obviously, in Tokyo Game Show next week. Uh, maybe until then we might get some little articles here or there, but we'll just have to wait and see. And hopefully I'll be able to find some time this weekend to do a video on Monster Hunter Stories 2, which I'm also very excited for. But right now, I'm just kind of focusing on Monster Hunter Rise as I make my initial videos. Anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And until next time, happy hunting.